fighting a lot of the peripheral uh, peripheral distractions. Um, for Carlton, Tristan Lefebvre is their quarterback, and he comes in now. He's had a Panda game uh, under his belt uh, a couple of years ago. He was uh, in. He's been in the lineup for three Panda games. He's been here before. He knows what this is all about. And and with Carlton, it's interesting. They've won two and lost two. They've they've won against the two weakest teams in the league, and they've lost to the two strongest teams in the league. So those seven teams in the middle, Carlton's got to figure out where they fit in in that group. And I think Ottawa U is in that position too. They they uh, they're a team that can beat. They're a team that can beat anybody on any given day. But they're a team that can be beaten on any given day. Now. We'll talk a little bit more about the quarterback story in Ottawa here. So Ben Miracle, QB1, goes down in the first game. Then Lacandro comes in for a few games. He goes down. He's going to be up for the season. And then, as you mentioned, Josh Jansen gets a chance now. So he, Ottawa's down to QB3 now. And you mentioned a little bit. So he's, he's had one game here in U Sports, and now he's playing a second in, in Panda game and like you mentioned that's that's big for a younger quarterback and someone who's this is really his first experience in youth sports that's got to be something that he's thinking about right now down there for sure I'm hoping for his sake that he can just lock everything out slow the adrenaline down and, and especially at the quarterback it's such a cerebral position it's a, it's a position where it's all about footwork and reads so so if he's if he's able mentally to, to kind of lock out the distractions and the noise and, and all the crazy stuff that goes on at a Panda game, uh, then, then, you know, we'll see. But football is a game of next man up. Uh, you know, you have your starting 12 on each side of the ball, but it's very rare that a player makes it injury-free through an eight-game season. You know, you've got to have depth behind them, and now we're at QB3, and uh, this, is, this is a test. It's a test for him, and it's a test for the team to see how much depth they have. This is where your recruiting in the offseason really comes into play is when you get yourselves in a situation like that. He's not the only guy that's that's down on the injured list. Carlton has some players that are hurt as well. So, uh, so you know, it's a game. As we, as we said, next man up, and, and uh, let's see what you got here. It's it's game time. Let's see, let's see what they can do. And now let's talk a little bit about the keys to the game for Carlton or both teams. Uh for Carlton, number one is they've got to run the ball. Carlton has not done well running the ball this year. They've played four games. They're yet to score a running touchdown on the ground. So their key is to get the offensive line to open some holes. Uh, for Ottawa U, I think I think the uh, I think it's the opposite. They need to run the ball and take advantage of of a strong running game, especially with a rookie quarterback in there. And we are about set to get underway here at TD Place. Fans are still making their way inside the arena. There's going to be 25,000 people in attendance today. And it is set to be a great game. It's a beautiful day out. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon for some U Sports OUA football. Carlton going to be kicking off first. U Ottawa will be returning the kick. Carlton's kickoff coverage has done very well this year. If Carlton has one advantage over the GGs this year, it's on special teams. And we are underway. The kick is off. It's caught at the seven yard line. He's got a little bit of room and a fumble. A fumble and Carlton recovers right off the back. Carlton will take the field in good field position. As we said on the onset, this is a game of emotion. Crazy things happen. Uh, and, and here we have a fumble on the opening kickoff. 100% nerves were a factor in that. So, so you're going to see a lot of plays like that in this game, especially early on. And Frederick Hatchie, a receiver for the Ravens, on special teams, grabs the fumble recovery there and puts Carlton in amazing field position. First and 10, balls on the 37. Lafave at the QB position. It's a quick out, and that's Hunter Brown with it. He's got some room to the outside, and a first down, and he'll be pushed out of bounds by Kevin Victome. One thing that Carlton has to do, especially on first down, is they've got to get the ball to their playmakers outside of the hash marks. They've run in the last couple of weeks a lot of inside zone runs, not having any success with it, but uh, getting a pass out in the flats like that is a great way to start the game and a first down for the Ravens. 
And now you hear the chants from the Ravens fans. LaFave going to pass again. He's looking. He's got a man. And it's Hunter Brown again, just short of a first down. Hunter Brown across the middle. And again, another good read. Uh, Jackson Brashear came up and made that hit. A uh, uh, second-year player out of uh, Cégep Lum. Oh, I don't know if I can say this. Lumoilieu out of uh, Quebec City. But uh, a good play, a good defendif- defensive play. Ravens will have second and short now, so I would expect this is a good shot for them to, a good place for them to take a shot at the end zone. So second and one, balls on the 11. Ravens already deep into the red zone. Lafave, he's looking past, he's looking end zone, and he's got Kasim Ferdinand. Touchdown, Carlton. That's, uh, again, Kasim Ferdinand was held, a rare occasion, he was held off the scoreboard last week, but he comes back with a touchdown. And uh, didn't like being tackled on the pavement there. He got up and had a few words for the Ottawa defender on that play. But a great start for the Ravens, a great start for uh, uh, both Ronaldo and Ferdinand on that play. You said it best right there, a great start. I don't think that they could have drawn up a better start to this game than what we just saw. They had to kick off. They get a fumble recovery. And now they're down, scoring a touchdown just pretty much a minute and a half into this game. And the extra point is good. So the Ravens will have a seven point lead early on in this game. And that is not how the Ottawa GGs wanted to start this one off. They're gonna look to regroup here. So just uh, while we're waiting for the teams to switch, a, a little bit of Panda history. The game started in 1955. Ottawa U student Brian McAnulty, a former associate editor of the Fulcrum, Ottawa school paper, uh, had arranged with Ottawa jeweler Jack Snow to display the original Pedro the Panda as Ottawa used mascot uh, in his Spark Street jewelry store. Then McNulty set up a prearranged robbery which attracted attention from the media and to the police to the bear. And um, from there, it, the hype began. Carlton beat Ottawa 14-6. Uh, it was only their second win in 12 games. Uh, the bear was parachuted down off the north side roof uh, by Graydon Harrison and Doug Duclo. Um, and, uh, and that was the first Panda game. And since then, it's just grown. And now Carlton will kick off. And that's going to be Charles Asselin on the return. And he makes his way up to the 20-yard line. And he gets brought down by Zendru Odin. Really good job by the Ravens special teams getting down and covering that. The uh, the Gigi's returner got a, a, a bit of a hole and, and ran the ball out to the 40-yard line before fumbling last time, but a better job by the coverage teams there. So now the Gigi's offense is going to take the field here. They're starting down by seven. They've got the ball on their own 21, first and 10, and we'll get a look at Josh Jansen in at the QB slot here. Receiver's in motion. He goes throw. And he's got a man, but they might have lost a yard there. Odman Braun came up on that play and made a big play, and then a couple of Ravens defenders came up and helped him, helped him out. Uh, so they're giving him one yard on that play. But again, a second and nine, that's a good situation for the, uh, for the Ravens defense. Ottawa U is going to have to go to the air and, and do something other than a uh, hitch pass to the sidelines on this. So it'll be a good test for both the quarterback and the secondary. And that was Maxim Malenfant on the catch. So he's got one catch here today. Jansen, incomplete. He was looking for Kerwin Geese, sorry, for Noah Avery. Couldn't find him. And that'll be incomplete and a two and out for the GG's offense here to start this game. Now, in 1957, after Carlton won the first two games, I'll tell you after the change of possession because they're going with no huddle here. And the atmosphere starting to pick up here inside TD Place. The punt is off. Kasim Ferdinand back to return. He's looking for room. He's going to head to the far side of the field. And he gets taken down. There's a flag on the play. That looks like it's a uh, uh, a block in the back against the Ravens, so it'll probably go back 10 yards from there. 
The Gigi's first Panda game win was 1957, and Carlton didn't have a strong year that year. They were 1-6. and six. Ottawa, you won the game 44 nothing. But what that game's remembered for is that uh, they, had a, they had a young team uh, at Carlton, but they only had 17 players for the Panda game. The entire team had the flu. Many players played both ways in that game with the flu, and uh, and they almost canceled the game. But uh, they, uh, they, you know, they were pretty courageous in playing and and gave it everything they had. But Ottawa U got their first Panda win in '57. So another look here at the Ravens' offense. Lafave in at the quarterback spot, and it's a handoff to Kasim Ferdinand, and he's got some room. There's a flag on the play. And he gets met by a sea of GGs and swallowed up at the Ravens 50 yard line. Hunter Brown, number 80, made a really good block as, as uh, the wide receiver there, but he got a little bit too much cloth on the sleeves. And uh, uh, unfortunately, he's, got, he's gonna get called for a holding call here. Um, one, one thing about this game, both teams are used to the same officiating crew from Ottawa. This crew is all from Toronto. And the Ottawa crew has enabled them to get away with a lot of stuff, especially the receivers on the outside. They've been grabbing cloth on the sleeve and getting away with it for all season. You've got a Toronto crew in here now refereeing this game. They're going to call things a lot tighter, so it's going to be a bit of an adjustment for both teams. And now first and 20 for the Ravens after that penalty. So they're back on their own 23-yard line. And he goes out to Jaden Simon. And that's going to be a gain of 9 or 10. Kasim Ferdinand went out there to make a block for Simon on that play. Missed his block. Simon beat the man, and then Ferdinand had the, uh, had the wherewithal to get up and block the next man down the field. So, so uh, Kasim Ferdinand, a big, a big play that enabled Simon to get 9 yards there. So they gave him 10. It'll be second and 10 now for the Ravens. Ball's on the 33-yard line. Lefebvre is going to be looking to the air. He's going to move with it. And he only gets about three or four yards off the sneak. So Tristan Lefebvre is going to be down around the 36-yard line. Jonathan Fournier, the, the linebacker, uh, you know, he stayed home and he was spying um, he was spying Ronaldus on that play. So a good stay-at-home play by the GG's defensive front. Their linebackers are very good. Chandra going to boot this one off for the Ravens. Charles Asselin gets it at the 35-yard line, and he gets brought down at the 32 yard line. And that's gonna be Boxall on the tackle. Again, we mentioned that on the onset, the Ravens special teams have had such a great year and special teams isn't just kicking. Special teams is more, more to do with the, uh, with the strength of your coverage teams. Carlton has some great coverage players. So another look at the GG's offense here. And Jeff, it's, uh, it's been a while since the Ravens have won a Panda game. What would it mean to the Carleton University, the, fan, the Ravens fans, and the team as well to get a win here today? It'll mean a lot to the players because nobody wants to graduate five years without having won a game. And uh, so, so there's a lot to play for for some of the Ravens players. And they're going to go hand off to Polk. And he's got space and a first down and more. Someone's got to bring him down. Ahmed Braun misses the tackle. And what a run there by Amilcar Polk. Last season when Ottawa won the Panda game 37-7, it was J.P. Simonkinda that was just running through holes and breaking tackles. Polk did an incredible job there because I, I, I don't know, I can't see a replay, but there had to be six or seven guys that had a shot at him that he broke contact with. We do have an injured player on the uh, on the field for the Ravens. So a huge gain there by Emilcar Polk. Now the GGs starting to get in threatening territory. They're going to be first and ten on the 29. 
Tristan, do you know who Carmelita is? I do not know who Carmelita well, is. Well, I'll tell you. Carmelita is a second panda bear. And in 1958, because they, Ottawa U and Carlton played twice, there was the panda game and then just another regular season game. They decided to introduce Carmelita, which was the panda game to the panda bear to be used in the others uh, in the other game. And the Carmelita was played for three times and then just disappeared. So, so we're not really sure whatever happened to Carmelita, but it was this thing that happened in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, and then just faded away. But it's uh, uh, Carmelita is a part of the history of this game. See how much you're learning here? I always learn something from you, Jeff. There's not been a game where I haven't learned lots. Now Jansen, a quick out and a catch caught at the 30-yard line. That's Maxim Molenfall, and he gets tackled there by Igamudu. L. James Igamudu on the tackle, and he is an awesome corner for the Ravens. He's all over the field all the time making plays. One thing with corners is everybody judges corners on how they are in, on covering deep passes, but in OUA football with so many passes out to the flats, the main job of a corner on a play like that is to come up and make a tackle because you don't have a lot of backup. Amagud is a great tackler, and so is Brahm on the other side. So second and 11, Jansen, and he might get brought down, and he does. So the Ravens come in with a sack. That looked like Ife Akinya, uh, Ife Onyeka um, coming in for the sack there. Last week, the Ravens had a, we talked last week before the Ravens game against uh, uh, Toronto, they had gone two games without a sack, and last week they set a school record with eight sacks by eight different players. So their pass rush certainly woke up last week. Campbell Fair coming in to uh, kick the field goal, and Campbell Fair is not only one of the best kickers in U Sports, but one of the best kickers ever in U Sports. This guy's phenomenal. We'll talk about him a little more after the kick. So a long 42-yard attempt for Campbell Fair, and it's good. No, he missed it. It's missed, I'm sorry. It'll be returned by the Ravens here. That's Ottman Brom returning that. And he gets brought down at the two-yard line, possibly the three. And this won't be the best starting field position for the Ravens. Well, in, in U, OUA football, if you run the ball out of the end zone, you automatically get the 20-yard line. So, so, uh, um, so <laughs> I'm just getting, I'm getting chirped here for, for jinxing the best kicker <laughs> ever. But uh, interesting thing about Campbell Fair, Lewis Ward played for the Kingston Grenadiers. Campbell Fair replaced him uh, at the OPFL level. And then Campbell Fair came in and replaced Lewis Ward with the, uh, with the GGs. And Campbell Fair has improved so much from his first year to his fifth year. I mean, that was a 40, 45-yard field goal attempt, and it was caught at the back of the end zone. I mean, he's got a big leg, should be in the CFL next year. And people don't realize how real that announcer's jinx can be, eh? And now we've got a handoff to Josh Ferguson, Ferguson, and he gets brought down. It'll be a gain of five. So he gets brought down at the Ravens' 25-yard line. That's an important five. I think they're even giving him six. That's an important run on first down. I mean, so many times in the last couple of games we've seen the Ravens stuffed uh, with a gain of only one or two on first down on his own run. Ferguson read the hole there. But there was a good push by the left side of the line. Um, so a, a better first down for Carlton. So second and four for Carlton. Ball on the 26-yard line. Tristan Lefebvre, and it's a handoff. Ferguson gets a first down. Ferguson, with that run, has now become one of the top 10 rushers in Car Carlton career history. Passes John Madman Dever from 1962. And um, Josh Ferguson's had a great career at Carlton. And there's going to be a flag on the play there, an offside. That was like offside and a half. Yeah. Uh, that was like. They jumped very early there. I mentioned, uh, mentioned 1962. There's a fun story from the 1962 Panda game that I'll tell you in a minute. 
Because you just love going down memory lane here with us, don't I you, do. Tristan? I do. So first and 15 for the Ravens after that penalty. And now Lefebvre is going to hand it off. And it's going to be Josh Ferguson. And he gets brought down by Max Charbonneau. Max Charbonneau, one of the best defend defenders in the entire league. He's, he one, of the best in, he's one of the best in the country. He's one of the best in the Sorry, Jeff. He's, he's one of the best in the country. He was a Winnipeg Blue Bombers draft pick. I had the pleasure of coaching, coaching Max for about six years when he was growing up in the, in the Nepean Redskins and Nepean Eagles program. And I was an offensive coordinator. He's playing linebacker. And we literally couldn't practice because he blew up every single play that we tried. Lefebvre looking pass. He's got Kasim Ferdinand at the 40 yard line. And that should be a first down there for the Ravens. And I don't think that they're going to give it to him. Eric Cumberbatch, one of the best D DBs in the, uh, in the OUA, came up and made a great play, a good tackle. Ferdinand was trying to get loose to get that, uh, to get that extra two yards, and Cumberbatch wouldn't let him. So the Cumberbatch brothers blow that play up there for the Ravens. And now the GGs will return. That's Charles Asselin who gets brought down at the 40-yard line. And the GGs offense going to take the field once again. So in the 1962 Panda game. Sorry, Jeff. We're going to be right back after a short commercial break. And we'll see you right back here on OUA TV. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to And welcome back inside TD Place. The score here between the Carlton Ravens and the Ottawa GGs is Carlton 7, Ottawa 0. And we've got the GGs offense taking the field here. And they've got some, some ground to make up here. So Jansen caught by Malenfant. That's Maxim Malenfant gets that catch. And he's going to have a gain of about six or seven there for the GGs. Carlton went into that play without a safety. They had a cover zero going on. So, uh, you know, a, a, some sort of a hitch post or something like that would have been over, open across the middle. But uh, uh, GG's electing to go to the outside there. But a good seven-yard gain. You take what the defense gives you. So they gave him eight on that one. It's going to be second and two. Ball's on the 49. That's the GG's 49. And they're going to go with a rush to poke. And he gets swallowed up. A great play there by the Ravens defense to bust up that run. And now the special teams will come on for the GG's to punt this one away. Carlton, oh. did a, Carlton shot the gap on, on the uh, left side of the GG's line and got in there. Polk had a big run on that same play uh, j just before, so um, not the second time. Ottman Brom going to be back to return for the Ravens. Campbell Fair punts it away, caught by Brom. He's looking for room. He's going to head to the outside, and he gets brought down by a mixture of GGs. Looks like Max Charbonneau was in on the action. I think if you call Max Charbonneau's game name on any tackle, there's a chance that if he didn't make it, he's right there. 
Fair probably would like to have that punt back. Uh, he, he was looking to go um, boundary side on that kick and uh, kind of shanked it a little bit and went down the middle. You don't want to be kicking the ball down the middle of the field against, uh, against this Ravens return team. So they credit Kevin Victome with that tackle there on Ottman Brom. And we'll take a look at the Ravens offense once again. It's going to be a handoff to Alex Gale. And he gets swallowed up after a gain of three. In, uh, I was telling you in 1962, so Glenn St. John was the quarterback for the Ravens. Was throwing a pass and he got hit really hard and he had a concussion. And he, he was trying to throw an out pattern to Kim McQuaig, who was their star receiver. And the, the uh, pass was incomplete. I'll tell you the rest of the story after this play. So second and five for the Ravens. Balls on the Carlton 35. And it's going to be another run here by Alex Gale. And he gets brought down after a very short gain. Looks like he might have got one or two. They've got one yard to go there, but I don't think they're confident enough that they can get a yard on, uh, on that play. So Glenn St. John throws an out pattern to Quinn McQuaig. It's incomplete. And for the next six or seven plays, he kept trying to throw an out pattern to Kim McQuaig. And he said after the game that he thought it was practice and that he was trying to complete this pass and do it till they got it right. He didn't realize because of his concussion that they were in the middle of a game. So Shandra punts this one away. Charles Aslan drops it. And recovered by Charles Aslan but not what the GGs wanted there. We've seen that a few times in the last few weeks of returners just not being able to get their hands around the ball, Jeff. Yeah, well, at Carlton, they brushed the ball with butter ahead of the game, and I don't know if they used the same substance here, but <laughs> one, one thing is if you're, if you're defending the, the canal side, which the GGs are, you're looking up into the sun to field the punts, and, and that can be a factor. It will probably be a factor later as the, as the game goes on later in the afternoon. So another look here at the GG's offense. Josh Jansen in at the QB spot. And he's going to be looking past. And he's got a man outside. And Louis Laveau comes in for the tackle there. And that's Maxim Malenfant who got the catch. So a gain of six there for the GG's. And it'll be second and four. Ball's on the 36. Malafon really did a good job uh, holding onto that ball because he took a hit uh, as soon as soon as he made contact. It was timed perfectly, but uh, Malafon really good concentration to hang onto that ball. So Robin Coolio out to the bottom of your screen, the receiver, and Malafon out to the upside again, and it's Polk with a run, and he gets brought down by Yusuf. Now that was, a, that was a that was a read that uh, again that's an inexperienced thing. You have edge rushers coming in at the ball from both sides, and you know his uh, his read on that play should have been to pull the ball and look for the hitch pass on an RPO. So Gigi is going to punt this one away. Kasim Ferdinand going to be back to return. And he's going to have to run for it. He's got it. And now he's going to look for some room. He's going up the sideline, and he gets pushed out. So a small return there for Kasim Ferdinand. And the Ravens offense will take the field again. Nice punt by Fair and a, and a, a nice job by the GGs getting down there and covering that punt. Got a great tackle Carlton, there. By Carlton uh, trying to set a wall up and, and get around it, and the GG's uh, penetrated. There's Gabriel LaRue, who was able to push Ferdinand out of bounds. So Lefebvre, and he hands it off to Gale. And Gale gets met by a sea of GG's. And that's going to be Max Charbonneau again in on that play. Eight, 
that's a, a big advantage for Carlton over the last couple of games to be able to get five, six, seven yards on first down on the ground. They weren't able to do that their last couple of games. Lefebvre, another handoff here to Alex Gale and a first down. That's and that's going to be Braden Kruji with the tackle there. Carlton's going to be really happy with that quarter uh, against Ottawa here in the Panda game. Yeah, so this quarter comes to an end. It looks like we've got an injured Gigi down on the field. Hopefully he is okay. We'll try to get a look at who it is here. Still looking to see who the injured Gigi is. But he is walking off with his own strength there, so that is good to see. Looks like uh, Polia Baptiste, the defensive end, from Grenoble, France. Have you ever been to France, Tristan? I have not been to France. That is definitely on the bucket list, though. You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in France? What do they call it? The Royale with cheese. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> why do they call it that? Metric system. You've never seen the movie Pulp Fiction, have you? No, I have not. Okay, there's homework for I've, you. I've you see what it's like, everyone listening in? We're <laughs> with a, here, here with a Gen Z guy? I've, I have meant to watch Pulp Fiction, but never gotten to it. That whole shtick was right out of Pulp Fiction. So, Spoiler alert. Calling all OUA fans. The new OUA TV Premium Pass is available now with the new Premium Pass. Fans can enjoy an ad-free experience, watch all live and on-demand games anytime, clip and share their favorite moments, and enjoy live DVR. Don't wait. Learn more about the Premium Pass and purchase yours today at OUA.TV. Now, had you seen Pulp Fiction, you would have replied with, what do they call a Whopper? And that was it. I don't know. I didn't go to Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are about set to get the second quarter of action started here at the TD Place. Still not, the stadium still not fully filled up yet. But I'm sure we will see all these seats occupied soon enough. I've got Lefebvre with a handoff to Alex Gale. And he gets brought down by Max Charbonneau. A little bit of misdirection on that play. And, and you, mentioned the, uh, you mentioned the crowd. And just looking over at the, the, the entrance to the north side entrance, and there's a lot of people in line trying to get in uh, still. Um, but the, the Ravens mixing things up this week and running a lot of off tackle on first down as, as, as opposed to the uh, zone run they've been running the last couple of weeks. Lefebvre, he's going to be looking to the air. And he's getting pressured, and he has to get rid of it. And what a play there by the, Raven, by the GG's defense. And that was Charlie Titley who pressured Lefebvre and made him get rid of the ball quickly. So it'll be third down and seven for the Ravens. And they're going to punt this one away. It's going to be Chandra to punt this one off. It'll be Charles Asselin back to return. And he catches it at the 19-yard line. He's going to be looking for room, wow. but he gets eaten up right away. 
That was Xavier Malone with that uh, with that hit. And what a tackle there! That was that was a Malone. head on. Um, that was like you know when Roadrunner and Bugs Bunny is driving that truck and, and he hits Coyote and just flattens him. It was kind of like that. That's exactly what it looked like. He holds a, holds a little sign up that says "Help," <laughs> um, and uh, and and you know it looked like Chandra that with that low kick kind of outkicked his coverage. But Malone, what a play down there! And it's really hard for guys defending to be able to go full speed and then break down and make a play like that because well, you can't make a play like that when you're at full speed. So Jansen, a handoff to Polk, and he's looking for some room. He's found some. He's breaking tackles once again, and he gets brought down just past the 30-yard line, so he'll be down at the 32. What an outstanding run by Polk because he had nothing. Cut back against the grain, had nothing. Cut back against the grain again and found some room and, uh, and got a, almost a first down on that play. Outstanding run, so outstanding vision and reads. And that was Chris Toupin who got in on the tackle. Another stud on the Ravens' defense. So second and two here. And another run there by Amilcar Polk. And we'll see where the spot is. Looks like he might be a few inches short of a first down. And they're going to give him the first down. So they're going to move the sticks. And that was Xavier Malone in on the tackle there. But a first down nonetheless for the GGs. They're going to look to piece a drive together here. Carlton again with going without a safety. Jansen looking pass. He's getting pressured. He's got to move and he's going to run with it. And he slides. So he'll have about a yard or two. Ottawa's starting quarterback, Ben Miracle. Well, we've got a player injured also again on the GGs. So that's Josh Jansen, who's the injured GG on the field. Jansen slid on that play, but he slid in traffic and took a pretty hard hit. And, uh, and you don't like to see that. I mean, he's QB3. The one thing with Jansen, he's a lot like Ryan LeCandre. Ryan LeCandre is a big six foot five quarterback that has an absolute cannon for an arm. But if there's a weakness in its game, it's his mobility. And, and it's the same thing. Miracle, their starting quarterback, who's out for the season also, uh, it's, a little bit different with, uh, it's a little bit different with him because Miracle is a little bit more mobile. We're going to see... We're, we're going to see the other quarterback for Ottawa U coming yeah, so in. Yes, that's Matt Mahler. Matt Mahler has had experience playing in the uh, in the Panda game a couple of years ago. Um, has had playing time in the in the past. Uh, he's he's a fourth year kid out of Canmore, Alberta. Um, but I mean, you know, you're you're bringing in a guy off the bench who's QB four, but has had playing experience and has done very well in this game. So uh, not not. You know, again, after number four, I don't know. I don't know where they go from there if if something happens. And you just hope that that is not the case, and you hope that Josh Jansen is okay and can make his way back into this game. Hopefully, he just needs to maybe get a little bit of work done at the medical tent there. Carlton had this problem a couple of years ago. They have four quarterbacks on the roster, and all four QBs at the same time were injured, and and uh, it really limited what they could do. So second and nine here after Josh Jansen goes down. He slid, like you said, but he slid into traffic. Not sure what his injury is, but it'll be a run by, Char by Polk. And that'll be Burke in on the tackle. Ravens linebacking crew made a good job swallowing that hole up. Again, Polk is a very good runner between the tackles and uh, Carlton's got to be be aware that you know he's not always going to hit the hole hard. He's going to make a cut, find an opening, and then accelerate. Polk is a great running back. So Campbell Fair going to punt this one away. It'll be Ottman Brom back to return it for the Ravens.
And Brahms got it at the 31-yard line, and he gets eaten up right away, but there's a flag on the play. That'll be a 15-yard no yards penalty. Um, again, when you're when you're covering a punt like that, if you don't if you if you catch the ball in the air and the player's coming at you, it's a 15-yard penalty. If the ball's rolling, it's usually five yards. Unless it's an intentional uh, an intentional shot. So that'll put the Ravens in a good spot to start this drive. The ball is going to be on the 45. Looks like possibly the 46. And it'll be first and 10 for the Ravens. And another look at Tristan Lefebvre and his offense. They've been moving the ball well so far here. Lefebvre going to hand it off. It's Hunter Brown who's got it, and he's just short of a first down. And that's Kevin Victome on the tackle there for the GGs. Kevin Victome, another really good defensive back. We talked about Cumberbatch earlier, but, you know, Ottawa is blessed with some really strong defensive secondary players. Victome is one of them. Tristan Lefebvre, the quarterback, tried to get out in front and uh, go Brett Favre and make a block for Hunter Brown. Unfortunately, he got in the way and, uh, and, and kind of obstructed the run, but still a very good play on first down for Carlton. Lefebvre looking to the air. He's got a man deep, and that's going to be incomplete. Great defense there. He was looking for Kasim Ferdinand. Couldn't get him. Kevin Victome got in the way of that pass. Kevin Victome played that perfectly. He was with Ferdinand step for step, got his cross arm in there to block the ball. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't defend better than that. And Kevin Victome looks like he's in a little bit of pain down on the field there. You hope that he's okay. Looking like he's going to walk it off. Gigi's training staff going to make their way onto the field just in case. But yeah, he's taking a knee here and he's throwing his helmet off, so he's definitely feeling a little bit uncomfortable there. Hopefully nothing serious. Are you a baseball fan at all, Tristan? I'm not. Okay. I'm not a baseball well, fan. Well, I am. And the 1956 Panda game, the first few Panda games were played on Thanksgiving Monday. The 1956 Panda game was the second one. Car uh, Carlton won that one. Um, and at the exact same time, one of the greatest moments in sports history happened. And it was a perfect game thrown in the World Series by New York Yankees pitcher Don Larson, which, which if for any baseball fan, that's like, that's like one of the most epic moments in baseball history. It happened at the same time as the Panda game. So I always thought that was kind of cool because I'm a bit of a baseball historian. It's funny that you asked me that because baseball is probably the one sport that is just not in my repertoire of sports. <laughs> <laughs> but for all the Blue Jays fans out there, I think that they clinched last night. They did. So Kevin Victome making his way off the field here with the GG's training staff. Not sure exactly what his injury is. Looks like he's walking okay. Could be uh, a hand or wrist injury. It looked well, like it looked, like it, looked like it was at. his ankle. It was his ankle at first when he must have rolled his ankle a bit. The reason I bring baseball up is because the GGs and the Ravens just finished the O-Train series in baseball, in varsity baseball. Carlton won three games to Ottawa's one. Uh, they play a four-game set at the, at the baseball stadium in Ottawa. And we're going pass on third down. There's the Ravens. It was intended for Arnett Smith. But that is incomplete. That was Tristan Rinaldis who was in for that uh, third down play. And That's they a, a gutsy call to run play action there. They did that against Western uh, two years ago and ended up scoring a touchdown on that same play. But, uh, again, everybody's got game film. Everybody's got the huddle app. Everybody sees what everybody's doing. Uh, they did not fall, fall. They did not fool Ottawa U at all on that play. So a turnover on downs from Carlton, and now we'll get a look at the GGs once again. And it looks like Josh Jansen is back in the action. Glad to see that he's okay. 
He's going to be looking past. He's got a man deep. It's Kerwin Geist who had the cast. They call it incomplete. He had it. He hit the ground with it, but he just couldn't hold on. And that's Igamudu and Zendru O'Dane who got in there. Geist got in behind, uh, got in behind Agamudo on that play, but he made a great job coming across, and and uh, just enough contact and enough uh, obstruction so that so that uh, Geist couldn't hang on. Geist was a member of the Ravens for the last few years and transferred to Ottawa U this year. A lot of young players in Ottawa will know Kerwin Geist because he's been a valuable coach for players at the uh, Junior Ravens camp. And now second and 10. Jansen looking pass again. He's got a man. And he gets brought down at the 25-yard line, possibly the 24. And that's John Jean on the catch, Nicholas John Jean. Nicholas John Jean had a, had a really big game against the Ravens last year. And, and again, we've been talking about the uh, Ravens playing cover zero and the middle of the field open underneath. Uh, Jansen was finally able to spot a receiver there on a crossing route. So, uh, you know, that, that's good, good adjustments coming from the coaching staff with the headsets upstairs recognizing that. And again, we're in a cover zero again for Carlton. First and 10 for Josh Jansen and the GGs. And they're going to be looking pass again. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Yusuf. What? A catch there by Yusuf, and Josh Jansen was looking for his receiver and underthrew him, and that's going to be a turnover there for the GGs. Not what they were looking for in that area of the field. That was an incredible athletic play um, on that defensive play there by uh, by Yusuf because because he ran it. He ran a, a a stop or a hook pattern and was wide open and. Um, Yusuf came over, ran 10, 15 yards quickly to get it to get that ball. So Malik Yusuf with his first interception of the season, and it comes here at the Panda Games. Lefave looking for a man deep, and that one gets broken up by Cumberbatch, and he was looking for Frederick Hatchie downfield. And Eric Cumberbatch gets in the middle of that play. Just a little bit underthrown on uh, on that play. And uh, uh, give a shout out to number 97 on the uh, on the GG's defense there, Riley Hildebrandt, um, kid from my hometown, Prescott, Ontario. Shout out. He pancaked Josh Ferguson on a on a pass block there, and it's uh, again that's another uh, Roadrunner Coyote hit. So second and ten here for the Ravens on their own 12 yard line and a quick dump off to Josh Ferguson and Max Charbonneau has something to say about that and brings him down for no gain. Max Charbonneau read that perfectly. It was, it was almost set up like a screen where, where Ferguson uh, pretended to pass block and then snuck out into the flats. And again, Charbonneau was staying home and, and uh, read that perfectly and he was right there. Max Charbonneau is, is He's had something to do with he, pretty much every yeah. big defensive play. He's one of the best players. The the, he's one of the best players in the history of this program. He is so good. So Shandra are going to punt this one away for the Ravens, and that's Charles Asselin, who's looking for some space, and he gets brought down at the Ravens' 51-yard line, possibly the 52. And that's Medley Joseph. Medley Joseph there on the tackle. And we are going to head into a quick break here. We'll see you right back here for second quarter action on OUA TV. To meet the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. 
follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OE way, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural. And welcome back inside TD Place. Ravens up by seven, seven to zero for the Carlton Ravens. And Jansen gonna hand off to Amilcar Polk. And he's just gonna be short of a first down. And that's Schneider Cave and Medley Joseph. Ottawa, in on that tackle. Ottawa's running a double tight end formation. And you don't, I mean, for about 30 or 40 years, teams were getting away from tight ends and double tight ends. And tight ends are making a comeback, but when you're going to run the ball inside, it makes a huge difference if you can have uh, uh, big athletes in there on the edge. And Jansen going to sneak it. Let's we'll see, where, see they where they this. spot this. I think he's got it. I from, it uh, looks like he's got it. So on second and one there, the GGs go with a quarterback sneak. And they're going to give him the first down, so move the sticks. And the ball is going to be on the Ravens' 49-yard line. The side officials on that play have the view of where was the ball when momentum was stopped. And there was a brief second where, where uh, Jansen got across the line before it was uh, a pushback. So. Jansen, handoff to Polk. And Polk's got to go backwards here, so he's going to lose some yards. There was nothing open for him. And the Ravens bring him down behind the line. Carlton did a, did a, a fantastic job kind of getting in there uh, on this game. Brody Burke kind of shot the gap. But again, the inexperience of Jansen running that RPO, uh, another bad read where, where that's a ball that should have been pulled out. And look for, you, look for your secondary play, which either either a, a hitch pass or, or whether it's something uh, down the middle. Jansen, and there's going to be a flag on the play here. Someone jumped a little bit too quick. That's a, uh, that's a time count violation. Uh, they didn't get the playoff in time for the 22nd clock, so it'll go back five yards. And that's not what you want at this point in the game, at that point on the field for the GGs. A few too many mistakes here for Ottawa, and they've got to start throwing together some drives if they're going to stick with Carlton in this game. But they've been playing very good defense as well, so that's also helped them stay in, in this game. So second and 18. Ball Carl on the 47 now for the GGs. Jansen has got some time, and he oh. overthrew Noah Avery big time there, and that was almost dangerous. Ottman Brom was around to intercept that. He just couldn't get his hands on it. Noah Avery, you know, Carlton rushed four, which meant that which meant that Jansen had a lot of time, but they dropped eight players. So for Avery to find that much space in that zone and be there, unfortunately Jansen just overthrew him. But Noah Avery, exceptional job getting uh, getting open on that play. So GG's. Gonna punt this one away. Ottman Brom back to return. He catches it in the Ravens end zone. And it looks like he just made his way out. Uh, they're giving him one point because he hit the cone. Yep. He was trying to get out where the ball could be at the 20 yard line. That's not what Fair wanted to do. Fair was trying to angle the ball out of bounds because they want a, they want field position, not Carlton out at the 35 yard line. Um, so he tried to he tried to jump and, and get the ball out, but his uh, uh, foot hit the cone, and and, um, and they're giving him a they're giving him a rouge for that. So Ottawa, onto the scoreboard now. So the score here at TD Place is seven for Carlton and one for 
Ottawa GGs. And a first down for the Ravens. Ball's on their 35-yard line. Lefebvre, play action. Tristan Reddy has got it in the flats, and he gets tackled there by Imane El Azri. Carlton had the right idea there. They had Patrick Lavois, uh, their, their, one of their offensive linemen, pulling and leaving, and he was supposed to go out there and block the corner. Didn't get there in time. And uh, again, we talk about the GG's corners. Both, both teams have great corners. So that was Tristan Reddy's first catch of the game, but no gain. Lefebvre going to be looking pass. He's looking downfield for Tristan Reddy, and that's almost picked off, but he couldn't hold on to it. So that's Cumberbatch who almost picked that one off, but he just couldn't keep it. And the Gigi's defense really playing well today. Yeah, and again, you know, Ronaldus, that's one he'd, he'd like to have back. Second and 10, you got to get the first down. You're playing, a, you, you know, it's a high-risk pass down the sideline. You're thrown into double coverage. Uh, the only things that can happen where he put the ball were, were, would be a, a difficult catch or out of bounds. So Chandra to punt this one off. Charles Aslan drops it. And he gets pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. And that's Medley Joseph who pushed him out of bounds. It'll be uh, it'll be good position for uh, good position for the GDs to to, to start. Um, 1964, Tristan. The uh, the GGs had won seven straight Panda games in Carlton behind the running of Dave Dalton, one. Pedro arrived at, at the stadium in a Brinks truck, and he would end up back at Ottawa U. The trophy, or the bear was presented to Al Horwick, the student president at Carleton, but he was beat up and attacked, and the bear was stolen and mutilated. You always have some crazy stories for me, Jeff. Oh, you haven't heard any of them yet. And now, Polk with a run, and he doesn't have much room to work with. Maybe a gain of two or three there for Amakar Pope. So the bear was sewn back together and presented to Ottawa U, or presented to Carleton uh, from the Ottawa U Student Council, and then the bear, uh, and even even the same stuffed bear was there in the 80s when I played, and you could see where it had been ripped apart and mutilated and sewn back up. At one point around that time, it was buried uh, by the soccer field at Carleton. Nobody knew where it was, and it was uh, it was hidden for a year. So Ife and Yeka credited with the tackle on that play. And now second and seven here for Jansen. And that's incomplete. He was looking for Nicholas Jean Jean. And that's that gets one of those broken up by the Ravens. That's one of those plays where Jean Jean turned from being a receiver to a DB. Uh, you know, when you see that the ball's going to be picked off, Jean Jean made a great play to... Uh, uh, to knock the ball out of the, out of the Ravens def defender's hands. That was Chris Toupin, and that was awesome coverage by Chris Toupin on that play. So third and seven, GG's going to punt this one away. And Kasim Ferdinand catches it at the 10-yard line, and he's going to make his way out. So Ferdinand heads out of bounds. And the Ravens offense gonna take the field. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the second quarter. And the Ravens lead by six. So first and 10, balls on the 18 for Carlton. Lefebvre looking to the air, and he's got Jaden Simon. And Jaden Simon gets brought down by Ayman El Azri. They're going to give him about six yards there. Again, a good, a good first down play. You know, second and four is manageable. But again, let's get the first down for if you're Carlton rather than trying to... Uh, 
trying to go deep here. So second and four now for Tristan Lefebvre and the Ravens, and he's got to move with it, and he gets brought down. Looks like that could be a loss of yards there and a sack. And he is sacked in the backfield there. Braden that's Kru Braden Krugey. Braden Krugey from Napanee, player that uh, got in. Did you know that Avril Levine is from Napanee? I did not. I didn't even know Avril Levine was Canadian, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So Chandra to punt this one away. And they do. Charles Asselin going to return this one. And he gets brought down at the Ravens' 50-yard line. We talk about the defenders having to break down and be under control. That was a low kick again, a challenge for the, uh, a challenge for the defenders. Xavier Malone came in at full speed, had the defender lined up, and he basically just turns into bullfighter and just steps aside and lets him run by him. A good return. The GGs have great field position already inside Ravens, uh, Ravens territory. So Josh Jansen taking the field once again for the GGs. And it'll be a handoff. No, he's looking past. Play action here. But he's got to run with it. And he's close to a first down there. He might just be a yard short. But that's a good gain there after that play got busted up a little bit. They spotted him at the, uh, at the 43 where he gave himself up, not where he slid to. So uh, they'll still have it. It'll be second and four on this play. But uh, the Ravens have to contain him. They're, you know. He's not, a, he's not a dangerous scrambler, but again, if you give a guy five to 10 yards, they're gonna take it. Janton has looked much better in the second quarter than the first quarter. He's been able to move the ball a little bit more, and now they're gonna call a timeout. So Josh Jansen didn't like what he saw, and he's gonna quickly take a timeout so they can get reorganized OUA.ca is your source for scores, stats, schedules and stories from around the conference spanning 20 members, 23 sports 39 championships and 9,500 student athletes the online hub for OUA information helps fans dive deeper into OUA.ca for your favorite sports teams and standouts from around the conference visit OUA.ca to learn more so second of four here for the GGs after a timeout's taken by Josh Jansen, who didn't like what he saw. In 1971, Tristan, the Ottawa GGs were ranked number one in the country, and Carlton won the Panda game from them that year, 28 14. Bob Eccles, their all Canadian linebacker, was their captain. Uh, Carling O'Keefe, the brewery, was a sponsor of the game, and they had a check for $400 for the winning program. And they were so confident Ottawa was going to win that they actually made the check out to the Ottawa GGs and then presented it to Carlton, which they had to, again, destroy the check and have a, a new check written. And team jackets were bought with the $400. That's awesome. So second and four here for the GGs. A minute and a half left to go in the second quarter. Polk going to run this one. He's got some room. He's got a first down. And he gets brought down at the 35-yard line. That's Louis Laveau who got in there to make that tackle. Laveau coming over. I mean, against, against Polk, you've got to have everybody moving up for your secondary level tackling because he's, he's tiptoeing his way through the, uh, through the line, but, but he's reading his holes so well. Polk is a great running back. He's an awesome running back, and he's one of those guys that's really tough to bring down. He's, a, he's great at breaking tackles. Now here's Jansen. Looking past, he's got a man, and Chris Toupe eats him up. And that's going to be Malenfant, who made that catch, and Chris Toupe met him right away. So second and three now for the GGs after a gain of seven. Ball's on the 28. Clock's ticking. They've got 
50 seconds to make something happen here before the second quarter and the first half come to an end. And it's going to be play action, and he's got to get it of bounds. He doesn't. He gets brought down inbounds, it looks like. No, he did get out of bounds. So a first down, and the clock will stop here. They'll have some time. So the clock stops in the last three minutes on every play. If if he gets out of bounds, it starts again on the snap. If if not, it starts when they whistle the play in. And I don't think he got out of bounds. So, uh, again, a, a, I wouldn't say a mental mistake, but the, the GGs have to have to give themselves some time because they've only got 36 seconds left. So maybe maybe time for four plays. So they'll have first down. The GG's crowd getting uh, getting excited, uh, chanting "Let's go, GG's!" Number 50, Sam Saint Jean from Quebec City, is 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 motioning to the crowd to like keep it down. You want you don't want to be loud when your team has the ball. So they're going to use this timeout here to get themselves sorted, and we'll see what they have for the Ravens. So first and 10, ball's on the 22. They're on the doorstep of the red zone here. And they're gonna look to pass. And that was almost picked off. It bounced off the hands of Nicholas jean -Jean. We've been talking about Amilcar Polk, what a great uh, running back he is uh, with the ball running between the tackles, but uh, he's also an exceptional pass blocker. He's setting up on the on the uh, off the left tackle uh, on those plays, and and he's a great pass pass blocker. Carlton not being able to get any penetration from that side, and that's one of those things he does very well. That's never going to show up in stats or in a scorebook or a score sheet. And that's one that Schneider Cave wants back. He thought he could get his hands on that ball and pick it off. Jansen looking deep. He's got a man, and he's got a touchdown. Maxim Malenfant. With the touchdown, GG's take the lead. So the GG's actually going to tie it up here and they're going to go for the extra point. But you imagine that they'll make their extra point and take the lead here from the Ravens. And the GG's crowd explodes and it's all quiet on the Carlton side. So Campbell Fair to kick this extra point here. And that is good. Gigi is gonna take the lead by one. And that's exactly what they needed to close out this first half. They needed to get on the board significantly and they did. So now Carlton going to receive this kick here, and they're also going to have the ball. They've the got they've got time. Quarter, sorry. They've got time to uh, get a couple of plays in with stop time, and a couple of timeouts left. They've got time to get a couple of plays and get in field goal range. In the last three minutes of of each half. If if uh, if a team uh, scores, oh, well, I'm talking about field goals. That that won't that'll be irrelevant anyway. But um, after this touchdown, but Zach Copeland is the kicker, uh, the other kicker for um, Fair, and he handles the kickoffs. Look for him to pin it, pin uh, Carlton pretty deep. So Gale and Rocha. Back to return, and it's going to be sent to Gale. He's going to return this one, Alex Gale. And he gets up to the 20, the 25, the 30, and he gets brought down at the 32-yard line after breaking a few tackles. And that was Braden Kruji who brought him down. And now 22 seconds for Tristan Lefebvre and the Ravens 
to make something happen here. As you mentioned, Jeff, they do have some timeouts so they can stop the clock if they make some quick passes. And they can probably get four plays off before they have to kick a field goal, so they can get down in range. And they're going to run it. Alex Gale gets brought down short of a first down. They'll give him six, maybe seven on that carry. Kind of surprised that they're going to do that on first down, but. So they give him seven yards there, and it'll be second and three for the Ravens. The clock starts now, so they're just going to take a knee and knee it out. They're not going to try to get in uh, scoring position. So the Ravens are going to take a knee here, and they're going to get the ball back once the third quarter starts. And so yeah. this quarter comes to an end, and we will see you right back here after a 15-minute break. And the final score of the first half is Ottawa 8 and Carlton 7. So Ottawa heading into the halftime, up by one, and we'll see you right back here on OUA TV in 15 minutes. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OUA, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year.
where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OE way, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. <laughs> Okay, my name is Jeff Morris. We're here at halftime. I'm joined by Carlton Ravens legend Michael Domagala. And Michael, you played in five Panda games? Yeah, I think uh, five and a half. I came back for uh, an extra season, so. Five and a half. Now, the first question I want to ask you, the greatest moment for you, Panda history as a Raven, probably the 2014 Hail Mary pass. Uh, what, what are your memories of that play in that game? Uh, I remember kneeling on the sideline, watching the play happen, thinking the game was done, but a miraculous play happened. So it's just one of those memories you'll never forget. And after that game, uh, a couple of really close overtime, double overtime games, it seems to me from watching it, it there were some epic kick, uh, field goal kicking duels between you and Lewis Ward from Ottawa U. What, what do you remember about, uh, about those games? Yeah, Lewis has always been an incredible kicker, and I guess the rivalry was always there, but for us both being good at what we do is is even better. But I remember talking with Lewis this, this week about it and laughing back at some of the memories about uh, the kicking battles. So, and and that rivalry carried into the CFL. You're you're playing with the Red Blacks now, replacing Lewis, who's injured. You've also played in a Great Cup. You played for uh, uh, for Hamilton. You were in Edmonton earlier this year. Uh, how did the Panda game uh, prepare you? To play in the CFL I mean obviously you didn't play in any games with this kind of atmosphere yep. uh, how did that prepare you for playing in the CFL yeah, it's uh, you see the turnout here it's it's unbelievable and the Red Blacks fans are incredible so the CFL fans are always packing the stadiums so it just gives you that kind of pre picture of, of what you're gonna get in the pros so in the Panda game you know you were at the Ravens uh, alumni breakfast this morning uh, you come back for the Panda game uh, when you can is it a great great time to uh, to catch up with some old teammates you haven't seen in a few years yeah i haven't been back since 2019 so it's it's been incredible being back in ottawa seeing a bunch of guys i played with back in 2013 2014 it's already 10 years now so it's great seeing some of those guys and 
they, they don't change. Everyone's the same, so it's, it's good to see them. Okay, thanks very much, Mike, and, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Jeff. Kay. I appreciate it. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OE way, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. exceptional student athletes are born where records are broken where great plays are made where school colors ignite passion where champions prevail where tradition is celebrated 
Ontario University Athletics. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many. And welcome back inside TD Place as we get set to start the third quarter of action here in the 54th annual Panda Games between the U Ottawa GGs and the Carlton Ravens. And Jeff, a good half of football there. U Ottawa turned it around in the second quarter. What you what'd you see from them? Well, there were a couple of factors in a uh, couple of factors in that quarter. Ottawa U had excellent field position. A lot of that was from. Uh, uh, from their special teams play. Uh, their linebacking core and their defense ha has been great. Max Charbonneau is having another great game as expected, but uh, the real difference makers for, for Ottawa on defense have been uh, uh, Cumberbatch and Victome, their corners on defense. They're, they're both playing uh, uh, great games. They're veteran guys and uh, a good turnaround for Ottawa U in the second, um, in the second quarter. Carlton on the other hand, uh, they're doing a good job getting some yardage on first down, um, but they have to uh, they have they have to they have to complete drives and get there. A couple of close, almost interceptions, um, but but Ottawa's turned things around. Uh, Carlton did not get a first down in the second quarter. Ottawa, you had six, so it's really the tale of two quarters. And uh, total offense, Carlton was way ahead after the first quarter. Now it's 152 Ottawa for 148 Carlton. So the, so uh, you can really see the momentum. Of this game, uh, of this game swing, and so the Ravens going to have the ball to start the third quarter, and like you mentioned, they're going to need to get something going on offense here if they're going to take the lead back. They s definitely slowed down in the second quarter and let U Ottawa back into this game. Not that U Ottawa was too far away, but Carlton definitely want to get some yards and get their passing game going. We've seen Tristan Lefebvre move the ball relatively well, but he's got to be a little bit better. Yeah, one of the turning points in that half, too, was uh, Carlton on that third and one gamble at, middle, at midfield trying to get a pass over the middle, for go for the big play. Uh, you know, that's probably one they'd like to have back, but if it worked, they would have looked like geniuses. Lefebvre has had a good, a good half passing, 9 for 13, but only 69 yards, so a lot of short stuff. He's, and all those, all those balls that haven't been complete, he's been looking deep on those ones. And we've seen him have success so far this season with deep balls, but it hasn't shown up yet today. So we'll see if that changes for Tristan Lefebvre and the Ravens. And this kick is off, and the third quarter is underway. That's Alex Gale who's going to come on the return, and he gets up to the 21-yard line. Ottawa did a tremendous job on kickoff coverage at that time to, to uh, um, you know, they got the ball, put the ball into the end zone, and, and Carlton starting at their own 22, so not great field position for the Ravens. If the GGs can get a two and out here, they're going to open the uh, third quarter with some great field position. So first and 10 on their own 22 for the Ravens. Lefebvre, handoff to Ferguson, and he gets eaten up right away. He'll maybe have a yard. And that's Braden Krugey and again, in there on the tackle. Getting only one yard on that first down. Uh, that puts them in a, in a difficult spot, second and nine. Ottawa's had a good pass rush. They haven't had a sack yet this uh, in this game, but they've had a lot of pressures. And Charbonneau's done a great job staying home and making sure that the quarterback doesn't uh, uh, leak out or they, d or they don't have an open screen pass. Lefebvre, second and nine here. He's got to run with it. And he's going to get a first down, and he gets brought down at the 35-yard line. No. They just did exactly what I said wouldn't happen uh, because Max Charbonneau was, uh, was not in his position where he usually is. He was on coverage that play. Uh, good read by Lefebvre to find some, uh, to find some room and, and get a first down. There's Patrick Cumberbatch 
who got in there on the tackle. So the Cumberbatch brothers today have been playing very well on the defensive side of the ball. And Lefebvre looking pass. He's got Tristan Reddy in the flats. And Tristan Reddy gets tackled by Ayman El Azri. And he'll be short of a first down. So it'll be second and short here for the Ravens. Ball's moved up to the 42. And it's going to be a handoff here. And it's Josh Ferguson who gets across the 50-yard line to the 51. So they'll move the sticks. First down there for Josh Ferguson. Carlton's receivers on the right side did a good job sealing in the edge player on that and uh, in the outside linebacker. Uh, letting Ferguson run downhill a little bit and get that first down. So first and 10 now for Lefebvre and the Ravens. We've got three receivers to the left. And going to be a handoff to Ferguson. And not much there for Josh Ferguson on that rush. Only picked up about three on that play. Ottawa U did a really good job. You know, they're running to the uh, to the boundary side on that play, and Ottawa U did a really good job st stringing that play out, making him run to the outside, forced him out of bounds. So second and seven for the Ravens, you know, passing situation. So they gave him two on that play. So it'll be second and eight. Ball's on the 53 here for Carlton. And Lefebvre looking pass. And he's got to move with it again. And he gets brought down short of the 55, so he's still at the Ravens 54. Not much to give there for the Ravens, and they're going to bring out special teams and punt this one away. Not really the drive they wanted to start this third quarter with. No, and on, and on second and eight, you're trying to get a first down, and you're taking on Cumberbatch and Charbonneau on that play. You're not going to win that battle. So Chandra to punt this one away for the Ravens. It'll be Charles Asselin to receive it. And he's got it short of the 20. And he makes his way up to the 27, possibly the 26. Not to get all sciencey on you, but uh, Chandra was going for the sideline. And, and what happens when... It, and on a windy day when the ball doesn't turn over, it tends to really curve uh, for a right-footed kicker. It, it, it curves to the left. And, and you s really could see the ball drift back toward the middle of the field there. Luckily, Carlton's coverage team was able to uh, uh, stay with the receiver. And Medley Joseph got banged up on that play. He was in to help on the tackle. And Jansen to Malenfant. And a gain of five or six yards there for the GGs. Malafon went through the uh, through the line on a on a fake jet, and what happened was was uh, af afterward nobody from the Ravens stayed with him. He was wide open. Um, luckily for the Ravens, they were able to come up and pursue and only s and hold that to a four-yard game. But a good read by Jansen on that play. So second and six for the GGs offense. Ball's on their own 31-yard line. Receivers in motion, motion. And that's almost picked off by L. James Agamudu, and he's going to want that one back. Yeah, he had a – Agamudu stepped in front of there, and the ball just bounced off of him. Um, he had a lot, of, a lot of room to run on that play. And you see him definitely he wants that one back. He throws yeah, his mouth guard on the ground there. It looked like he was going to have it. He's not happy with himself. So third and six for the GGs. And they're going to punt this one away. Kasim Ferdinand to receive it for the Ravens. He catches it at the 25 and not much room to work with there. He makes his way up to the 26. Again, we talk about on the punting team getting the ball near the sideline so you can seal in the uh, seal in the returner. 
and the, the Gigi's coverage team did a perfect job sealing Ferdinand in. He wanted to go around and tr try to set the wall up, but there was nowhere to go. He cut back toward the sideline, nowhere to go there either. So Lefebvre and the Ravens offense take the field again. And they're going to go hand off to Josh Ferguson. And he makes his way up to the 35. So a gain of, yeah, they're going to give him five on that play. Yeah, they're giving him seven yards on that. A good, good job by Ferguson breaking tackles and getting yards after contact. They give him eight, actually. So second and two here for the Ravens and another rush. Ferguson got eaten up short of a first down. And yeah, we'll Car see Carlton. if they keep the offense on on third and one. Carlton has a hard time, has had a hard time all season moving the ball between the tackles. You know, when they're when they're running, when they're running off tackle or they're running uh, around, they're giving him really close to a first down, like about a foot away. Yeah, we'll see. I thought the, the GGs had stopped here. him before that, but. Yeah, so the Ravens are going to keep the offense out on third and one. They're, they're going to bring in Tristan in their third down quarterback. So they'll look for Rinaldis to power ahead here. And he does, not it looks like he's got a first down. Yeah, he's got it before they uh, pushed him ahead. So Tristan Rinaldis comes in and does his job on third down for the Carlton Ravens. He got to and about we'll take the a look yard at the line spot, but the they're definitely going to move the sticks here. They do. And first down for the Ravens. Rinaldis found a hole between the guard and tackle on the left side, got to about the 40 before the GGs swallowed him up and pushed him back. So uh, Rinaldis did, uh, did his job on that play. So, so Lefebvre back in at the quarterback spot for the Ravens. And they're going to go with a rush. It's Josh Ferguson gets brought down by Riley Hildebrandt after about a game of, gain of five. They run that zone run to the left, and what happens is every line, every every player on the line picks the player to the left to block, and then it's up to uh, Ferguson to read the hole. So he did a good job there. So second and five after a gain of five on the Ferguson run. Ball on the Carlton 45. Lefebvre looking to the air. He's got Reddy in the flats. And Tristan Reddy's got some room and gets brought down by Cumberbatch at the Ravens or at the GG's 50 yard line. So they're going to move the sticks first down. And Tristan Reddy's got another catch tonight. Today, sorry. And that was intended there for Hunter Brown. Carlton went quickly, and they didn't get him. Incomplete there. Second a, and ten. That's a tough pass because Brown was open, but he had to throw the ball over Braden Krugey, the linebacker who was dropped back in coverage. And to throw the ball over him with enough velocity, there's just no way Brown uh, could have been able to get, that, get up there and get that ball. So second and 10, balls on the 50. Lefebvre, quick out to Jaden Simon, and he's going to look for some room. Doesn't have any. And that's Eric Cumberbatch, who tackles him out of bounds. And the Cumberbatch brothers have been all over the place for the GG's defense. They've had a, they've had a strong game, and... Let's see, Shander's going to try to probably put the ball uh, put the ball out of bounds inside the 10. The guy holding the camera in the white hoodie on the five-yard line, it's going to come right to him. And Aslan catches it on the 20, and he gets eaten up right away. Gigi's nearly blocked that punt. Good tackle there by the Ravens special teams. Carl Von Eisiedel with the tackle. For 
So Gigi's offense takes the field once again. And we were gonna see we're gonna see you right back here on OUA TV after a quick commercial break. So we'll see you back in two minutes. Diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were... And welcome back inside TD Place for the 54th annual Panda Game. First and 10 here for the GG's offense, and Amilcar Polk on the run. Should be a gain of two or three there for Polk. And Polk's had himself a good game so far. He's got 68 yards before this rush. Anthony Lucan in at in a linebacker for Carlton came up and met Polk and held him to a gain of three there. But Polk has been really having a good job getting through the, the first wave of tacklers on, on the line. And Jansen looks for Coolio. He's got him. And a first down. So Robin Coolio on the catch. And L. James Igamudu and Zendru Ode on the tackle. Seems like both teams are having success in the same spot, you know, getting the ball out in the flats, eight to 10 yards down the field. And uh, um, it's a long pass for the quarterback. It's a slow developing play, but, um, but both teams are, having, uh, are finding seams there. So first down here for Jansen. He's looking pass. He's looking deep. He's got a man, and he's got a catch. And he gets brought down inside the red zone. That's Nicholas Jean Drun. What a pass there by Jansen, and what a catch. Jean Drun had, a, had an exceptional Panda game last year, and he's uh, He's, he's back at it again. He got in behind the Carlton defenders and uh, a great ball by, by Jansen and a good job by the o Ottawa offensive line because he had all kinds of time to throw that ball. Carlton has got to get a stronger pass rush to, uh, to, to not give Jansen that much time. So now the U Ottawa fans back into this game. And he's looking past again, and he's got a man, and they've got a touchdown! Touchdown, Ottawa! So the GGs extend their lead. And that's Scott Fulton there on the touchdown. And the GG's fans erupt. So Campbell Fair for an extra point here to extend this lead. And they will. So 15 to 7 now for the Ottawa GG's and the Ravens with some work to do. Scott Fulton, a tight end for the uh, um, for the GGs, and again we talk about how uh, a lot of teams don't utilize a tight end. Scott Fulton played tight end at Lehigh University in the states before coming back to his hometown of Ottawa, transferring to Ottawa U. Uh, a great weapon to have, and he's a he's a very versatile football player. 
Carlton's got to get some field position uh, off this kickoff if they want to have any hope that Carlton really needs to score on this drive to stay in the game. It's only a one a one score game now if you if you count the two point conversion. But they can't let this game slide away from them like they did with the uh, the Western game a couple weeks ago. And the U Ottawa secondary has done an awesome job at containing the pass and not letting them get anything deep today. And that's hurt the Ravens here. So the GGs and Campbell Fair going to kick this one away. And Alex Gale catches it in the Ravens end zone. And he breaks a few tackles. So he gets brought down at the 17. That's Lewis Prince in on the tackle. I'll give you an officiating moment here. If you're wondering why the ball does not come out to the 20, if it's into the end zone and out, it's because it's only on a play from scrimmage when the ball's kicked in the end zone that, that you can bring it out to the 20. So on a kickoff, uh, you bring it out and it's where you're tackled. On a punt or missed field goal, it's the other. It's uh, it's not though. Pretty helpful having uh, an ex-referee up in the booth. The Lefave handoff. That's Alex Gale for a short gain. He makes his way up to the 20. So here's a challenge for the Ravens. The Ravens really have to get a first down here just to get out of the shadows of their own goal line. Um, so, so look for something. Look for something on the outside around uh, ar around between five and ten yards. Second and six for Carlton. Lefebvre looking pass. He's got a man, and that's Kasim Ferdinand and a first down Ravens. Ferdinand on that slant play, he used a lot in the last two games. We haven't seen much of that today because they've been working the outside, but again, the Ravens find Kasim Ferdinand is gifted at getting open. That's the one thing he does better than any receiver in the OUAA is get open, and a great target for Lefebvre. So first and 10 on the 34 for the Ravens. They look past. He was looking for Ferdinand. A little bit short. I think that ball might have been tipped. Yeah, it looked like it was uh, tipped. I can't see the number of the player that uh, tipped it. So second and 10 here for the Ravens after that incomplete pass. And you got to imagine they'll be looking to the air again. So two and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Gigi's in control of this game. They've got an eight point lead over the Ravens. The officials are taking some time to get themselves figured out, it looked like. Kevin Anderson, number nine, is being uh, taken out of the game. The trainer's looking at him. So I would imagine there's some blood on his uh, wrist or arm. That's usually what happens in a case like this. It's like you've got, you've, you've, you've got, an un, you've got, you've got blood or, or a cut that's not covered. You've got to cover that back before you can come back in the game. Yeah, so they tape up Kevin Anderson, and he's going to head... Back out onto the field for the GG's defense. I never got cut, so I never had to come up and do that. Sometimes my feelings would get hurt in the game, though, but there's not really anything they can do for that, especially back when I played. <laughs> Going to have to fill out a hurt feelings report. Well, exactly. So Lefebvre, second and 10, looking to the air. He's got a man. It's Hunter Brown. We haven't, again, we haven't seen... We haven't seen Lefebvre work that part of the field that was so successful for them against Toronto. Uh, th those crossing routes at about uh, 10, 15 yards. So uh, a good play by him, a good read, and, and uh, that's two first downs in a row that they've got uh, going across the middle. And that's my apologies. That was Frederick Hatchie on the catch. He had himself a great game we've against UFT. We've also got an unnecessary roughness call after the play. 
which is going to tack another 15 yards onto it. So it's going to put Carlton in in the Ottawa U end, end of the field. And the Ravens will take it. They need everything that they can get here. So Jaden Simon out to the bottom of your screen. And Tristan Reddy at the top of your screen. He goes quick out to Ferdinand. Ferdinand gets a first down for the Ravens as he makes his way out of bounds. And they're going to move the sticks for the Ravens. That's a dangerous play because that was a lateral pass. If Ferdinand doesn't field that or drops it, the ball's live and anybody can pick it up. But uh, well-executed play by Carlton. Lefebvre, handoff. And that's Alex Gale who's got some room. And he gets brought down in the red zone. So the Ravens knocking on the doorstep of the GG's end zone. And, uh, you know, we haven't mentioned uh, Dylan McCoy yet. Uh, this game, the left guard. McCoy and the tackle, Patrick Lavois, uh teamed up, opened a big hole for Gale on that play. That was the Ravens' best running play, not just of the game, probably of the season. And another handoff here. Alex Gale's got room, and he gets brought down just short of the end zone. He's going to be down on the one-yard line. And it looks like we've got an injured Gigi on the play. And you'll hope that he's okay. It looks like it could be Eric Cumberbatch that's down. And that would be a big loss. And it looks like the medical staff is moving very quickly to Cumberbatch. This looks like it could be serious, unfortunately, for the GGs. We mentioned earlier in the game, Carlton, after four games, still has not had a rushing touchdown on the ground um, yet this year. So I would expect to see Tristan Rinaldis to come in at quarterback at the one yard line and then sneak it in. Lefebvre is out in the middle of the field here, looking for what the play call is going to be. And now he makes his way to the sideline. And you really hope that the injured Gigi on the field is OK. Not sure how much crowd noise the broadcast is picking up, but it's starting to get a little loud in here on the Carlton side as they are looking to score here. And that was Emmanuel Abwaja Jean, who was the injured GG on the play. And he makes his way off the field. He's another player from that very strong St. Francis Xavier High School program in, uh, in Riverside South that has uh, two, foot, two CFL players they've produced, one of them Tunde Adelike of the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats. And so they leave Tristan Lefebvre in the game on the one yard line, hand off to Alex Gale, and he's gonna lose a few yards. Now there's a situation where a running play like that at the one is very slow developing. You know, if, if you're under center and you sneak it or if you're under center and you do a quick dive, you can, you can attack them. But they're giving the GGs a lot of time to, to penetrate Carlton's, Carlton's uh, line of scrimmage. Now you're looking at uh, second and goal from the three instead of the one. Yeah, so second down here and they're running pistol for again. the Ravens, and they're not going to want to settle for a field goal at this area on the field. And they're going to pass and that one gets knocked down by Cumberbatch. Patrick Cumberbatch says no, 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 not in my house today. And that's incomplete for the Ravens. I don't see kickers and holders coming on the field right now. I don't either. Um. So it looks like Coach Corey Grant of the Ravens is going to elect to keep his offense out on the field. He's got trust in his quarterback, Tristan Lefebvre, to make a play. Aiden Arnett-Smith, a fullback, 
from St. Joseph High School in Barhaven checking into the game. And again, he's a very versatile player that can block and catch. Tristan Lefebvre. And they went with a handoff there. And it looks sure. like U Ottawa's got a stop on third down. They do. And it'll be a turnover on downs for the Ravens. And the GG's offense will take the field hemmed on their one yard line. That was a statement stance by the GG's on this, uh, on this play. And uh, we got the end of the quarter, so now everybody's got to go 108 yards back to the other end of the field. All the linemen are like, man, you're kidding. So that will close out the third quarter of play. And we will see you right back here on OUA TV after a short break. Tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OUA, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. One, two, three. Diversity in sports. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversation. And welcome back inside to a sold out TD place. And if you're just tuning in, you've just missed, you ought to get a big stop on third and short and force a turnover on downs by the Ravens. And now the GG is gonna be hemmed at their own one yard line. So Josh Jansen going to hand it off with Polk, and it looks like he's got he's brought got down safety. inside the end zone for a safety. And that's what the Ravens need. It looks like that was Malik Yusuf that blasted through the gap and, uh, and caught Polk in the backfield. So what a turn of events after that huge stop. First and goal at the one for Carlton. The Ottawa GGs come up big, and then they give up a safety. So Carlton gets two points, it puts them in the spot where a touchdown will put them in the lead and they're gonna get the ball back. And what do you think about them running the ball in that scenario? I think you have to, but again, both teams make the same mistake. You can't run a play that is so slow developing uh, like that because you're just giving, you know, you know that your defense is gonna be coming, they're gonna be shooting the gaps, they're gonna be uh, plugging, the, plugging the holes. And, and, and you're exchanging that ball on that play, you know, four yards deep in the end zone. Uh, you're very vulnerable. So the Ravens make this a one-score game once again. GG's 15, Ravens 9. First and 10 on the 35 for the Ravens. And Lefebvre going to have to run with it. And he's going to take a hit and go out of bounds there. And that's Cumberbatch 
with who Fave sent kinda, him out of bounds. Fave kind of geared down when he was going out of bounds, and Cumberbatch was like, no, no, you don't. I'm going to give you a smack. Poured him a big glass of Cumberbatch juice. That's what he <laughs> did. So second and five here. I like that one, Cumberbatch juice. Right. Second and five here for the Ravens. I won't tell you what's in it because in the special edition Panda game uh, cocktail mixture. Lefebvre, they're going to hand it off. It's Aiden Arnett Smith. And it's going to be a very short gain there for Arnett Smith. And they're going to bring on special teams. So a little anticlimactic there for the Ravens. Yeah, second after and five. They second and five, you've got to put the ball in the air out to the outside and get to the flats. You've got to get the ball outside the hash marks. Yeah, so after forcing a safety, Carlton's going to go two and out. Ottawa U's look like they're bringing it to uh, try to block the punt here. And Shandra kicks this one away. And Asselin gets met by four or five Ravens on the 45-yard line. And that's Carl Von Eisiedel with another tackle on special teams. He's, he's, made, a, he's made a couple of uh, a big plays. He's the long snapper on the, uh, on the Ravens special teams. And uh, just taking a look at the stats after the, uh, after the third quarter, uh, Carlton regained the advantage. They now have 14 first downs to Ottawa, use 10. Uh, total offense, Carlton has 292 yards to the Gigi's 244. And um, Alex Gale, 75 yards rushing. Josh Ferguson, 45 yards rushing for the Ravens. Emilcar Pork, Polk, 11 carries, 74 yards for the Gigi's. And for receiving uh, Jandron, two receptions, 90 yards, one of them being a 60-yard play uh, where he was uh, tackled. So very evenly matched game so far. First and 10. Gigi's on the 46. Jansen looking pass. And he's getting pressured. He's got to move. And he gets brought down by Anthony Lucan. Lucan was the first one there. A good read by uh, by. Jean draw, or by Jansen to uh, to evade that rush and get in the hole. But again, he's not got the speed that, that someone like Miracle has. Um, he's a big guy. He's a big quarterback. and Some big quarterbacks are mobile. Look at Josh Allen. He's a big quarterback and he can move. He's mobile. So second and nine here. Gigi's on the 47. Carlton needs a stop, and they're going to get it here. So that was a short pass. That was a screen pass. It was uh, broken up by Michael Lightbody from the uh, West Carlton Wolverines, a guy that grew up being coached by former Ravens center Tim Sonnenberg. So GG special teams make their way onto the field. Ottman Brom. Back to return this punt for the Ravens. Ottman Braun's already got a, an 80-yard touchdown punt return to his credit this year. And they're going to stay running a fake. Wow. Campbell Fair gets a GG's first down. And that is not what the Ravens need here, but exactly what the GG's need. And they're going to keep their offense on the field. That's a very heads-up play by Fair. Uh, he saw the opening. Probably had the green light. I don't know if that was by design or whether he just saw the opening and ran for it. But again, you're, when you're on the defensive front on, a, on special teams, your first responsibility is wait, make sure the ball is kicked. There were a lot of people running in the same direction from Carlton as Fair that had no idea that he still had the ball. Campbell Fair, a big veteran play, heads up play. Jansen, handoff to Polk. And Polk was looking for some room, couldn't find any. Schneider Cave came across from the opposite side, and uh, Polk was trying to cut back, but Cave was right there to stop him. And how big would this be for Josh Jansen, QB3, 
to come in here in his second U Sports game and win. I'll tell you, he's, he's, uh, he's been very impressive. So second and nine. Ball on the 47. Jansen looking pass. He's got a man, it's Noah Avery. And a first down, GG's. And they're just outside of the Ravens red zone. Again, the GG's penetrating that, that, uh, that middle of the Ravens defense in behind the linebackers. A lot of poise by Jansen to find that, uh, to find Avery wide open there. Schneider Cave in on the tackle. And the U Ottawa fans are letting them hear it. I don't like that. And it's gonna be a handoff to Polk. And he gets maybe four or five off that run. I'm trying to be a uh, Nonpartisan here, but I am a former Raven, and the Ottawa U fans are singing Ole Ole. It's a soccer song. <laughs> Why not just sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game for crying out loud? It's a soccer song. This is a football game. You know what the difference between soccer and football is? Soccer is 11 guys uh, on the field pretending they're hurt, and football is 11 guys pretending they're not. Fair enough. Fair Mind enough. you, I am a big, uh, a big soccer fan, so I shouldn't say that, but. Second and six here, Jansen looking past. He's got a man outside, and a first down and more. So that's down, Robin he, Coolio. He, uh, he, he had his knee down, so uh, even though. Yeah, so he might be short even of though the he first broke the down tackle, here. His knee hit the ground, so they're short by a yard. GGs are bringing their heavy unit in, so they're uh, they're going to try to uh, run this up the middle for a first down. And this would be a big stop for the Ravens. Mahler is in at quarterback now. And it looks like they've got it. So Matt Mahler sneaks one, and the sticks will move once again. Mahler is listed on the roster for position as athlete. A and I always thought that was in interesting. But he's, he's, a, he's one of those jackknife guys like Tristan Rinaldis. He can play anywhere. So first and 10 on the Ravens 13 for the GGs. And I imagine one of these passes might be looking towards the end zone from Jansen here. He's going to hand it off to Polk. And Polk fumbles it but gets it again. A nice bounce there for Amilcar Polk. He dropped the ball and it bounced right off the turf, right back into his hands. And Chris Toupin comes in on the tackle for the Ravens. What a heads-up play by Polk. That ball, that ball bouncing, and he, he uh, after the ball was stripped out of his hands, uh, was able to was able to pick that right back up. Didn't gain any. Well, he got one yard on the play, but I mean that could have been disastrous for the GGs. There's a man down for the Ravens. So the Ravens training staff I can't makes see their who way it is. It looks like out David onto Clark, the field. I can't tell for sure. Now the rivalry continues on November 19th when the University of Ottawa GGs and the Carlton Ravens women's hockey teams collide at TD Place in a 2023 Colonel By Classic. I think it's great, Tristan, that, that this rivalry has carried into other games. The Capital Hoops Classic uh, basketball game has become the highlight of the year uh, in the city for basketball. Uh, the Bytown Classic hockey game between the Ravens and GGs. We just talked earlier about the O-Train Classic between Ottawa and Carleton in baseball. It's, it's really great to see that, that this, this great rivalry between the two schools is sort of spreading into other sports and, and, uh, and growing. And I don't think that there's any rivalry just like it in Canadian sports. No, and, and like having lived in the States for a long time, I've seen great rivalries, you know, Washington, Washington State when I lived in Seattle. Uh, when I lived in Dallas, it was, it was you know, Texas, Oklahoma or, or you know, anything with TCU or, or SMU. Um, but, but this is very unique for Canada to have a, a rivalry like this. 
So Gigi's on second and nine. Jansen, he's looking towards the end zone and it's picked off. That's huge for the Ravens. That's That'll be a turnover and there's gonna be a late flag on the play. Unfortunate play for Jansen because he had all kinds of time and was just a little bit behind the receiver. Bit of a tip drill and Xavier Malone picked that up. We also have a flag after the play. Let's see what that is. And you got to hope that this isn't, or if you're Carlton, you got to hope that this isn't being it's called It's an unnecessary roughness you. after the play against Ottawa. So not only is Carlton lucky to get the ball, uh, but they're also moving up 15 so that they're not in the shadow of their own goalposts. That's a bad break for the GGs. And for anybody that's a youth player or high school player watching who's a receiver, if the ball's thrown behind you like that, if you reach and you pop that ball up in the air, that, that's a tip drill that's a dangerous ball, ball that you're giving to the defenders. Now first and 10 for the Ravens on their own 27. And they haven't been able to get much going since their first score. Lefebvre almost dropped that snap. And Josh Ferguson gets brought down after a gain of five. So a good gain on first, ga first down for the Ravens and that'll give them second and manageable. A couple of guys we haven't mentioned yet in this game, the right guard, uh, Brady Peters and, or Brad Peters and the right tackle, Noah Fahey, who was a, had a great rookie season last year, uh, really, sealed off the, uh, really sealed off the edge for Ferguson to get some yards. And Lefebvre looking out to Kasim Ferdinand. Ferdinand doesn't turn the Jets on just yet, but he's got a first down. Ferdinand did a good job just, just taking his time and following the blocking of Tristan Reddy on that play. and Because, uh, you know, he's just following the blocking. If he would have tried to break free, uh, he didn't really have anywhere to go. And Emmanuel Abouajajan on that tackle there for the GGs. Lefebvre, first down, he's got Tristan ready wide open and another first down. And that's Tulu Ahmed on the tackle. And Tristan Reddy's got his fourth catch of the game. What the Ravens are doing, not only nickel and diming down the field and getting first downs, but they're also chewing up a lot of clock. You know, if they can take another two or three minutes off the clock and get a score, that'll put them in really good position to win their first Panda game in, in five years. And handoff to Ferguson. He's got room. Some great blocks downfield. He's got space, and he gets down to the 35-yard line. And he might have got more than, to, than the 35-yard yard line. Down at the 31, another Ravens first down. And Braden Kruji, the linebacker on the tackle there for the GGs, had to chase down Josh Ferguson. And there's an injured GG on the field. And as always, you hope that he is okay. Braden Kruji was the last hope for the GGs in stopping Ferguson. And and they wrestled downfield for about uh, for about 10 yards. So this is by far Ferguson's best game. I would say it's his best game since COVID. He's been fighting off injuries and, and you know, had some ups and downs. Um, but the Carlton offensive line is having their best game this of the year. And, uh, and so is Ferguson. Once again, calling all OUA fans, the new OUA TV Premium Pass is available now. With the new Premium Pass, fans can enjoy an ad-free experience, watch all live and on-demand games anytime, clip and share their favorite moments, and enjoy live DVR. Don't wait. Learn more about the Premium Pass and purchase yours today at OUA.TV. And the injured Gigi is going to make his way off the field now. That looks like Riley Hildebrand again. He was, uh, he was uh, questionable whether he was going to be able to play today or not. He's playing injured. Uh, Pride and Joy Spencerville. And uh, he's a valuable player on that team. I just saw the best T-shirt when they were pan pan panning the crowd, uh, an Ottawa U student with a maroon T-shirt that said, uh, Carlton flipped the car. 
of course, after, <laughs> all the, uh, after all the stuff last year that went on. And Lefebvre turns around and finds a man who's got a lot of room. It's Jaden Simon who gets brought down at the 10 yard line. And that was Jackson an extremely Brashear well executed play. A lot of timing on, on that play, and Simon did a good job getting in. Again, Carlton pulling a lineman out there to block the corner, uh, open the hole for Simon. Uh, couldn't quite get in the end zone, but Carlton knocking on the door at the 11-yard line. Jaden Simon, first-year receiver for the Ravens, son of the legendary G. Roy Simon, who is in attendance here today, a CFL legend, multiple-time champion winner. Sorry, Grey Cup winner, and Lefebvre pressured. He's got a man again, and it's Jaden Simon who almost has a touchdown. He's going to get brought down at the one-yard line. So they have room to get a first down here. Let's see if they have a first down, and they'll have a couple of plays. Yes, it looks like they do. They're giving them a first down. So here we go, first and one again. Let's see if they do things differently here. So Jaden Simon getting into the game here late after not being targeted since the first. They're bringing a heavy lineup in and Ronaldus is in, so. Tristan Ronaldus is your quarterback for the Ravens and he's gonna sneak and he's got a touchdown! Tristan Ronaldus off the QB sneak and the Ravens take the lead. Four minutes left to play. The Carlton side erupts here at TD Place, and Tristan Ronaldis is as excited as ever to have a touchdown in the Panda Games, and he's forgotten that he's supposed to be on the field as a part of this extra point kickoff, <laughs> and a coach sends him back out there. And now Forcier with the extra point, and it's good. And a lead for the Ravens. And again, this goes back, Tristan, to how important it was for the Ravens to get that safety. You're right, you're right, Jeff. That safety was definitely very important. I'm just looking at all the Ravens fans in the crowd here, and it is nothing but excitement for most people in attendance right now they haven't seen a Carlton win at Panda game and they definitely want to see it here today I think their last Panda game win was 2018 when uh, Michael Domagala was playing in that game who was our guest at halftime and after that Ravens touchdown We'll flip to a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back here on OVA TV. Like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained, were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OE. And welcome back inside TD Place. If you're just tuning in to the last few minutes of this game, the Ravens just took the lead. And a kickoff here by the Ravens, Charles Asselin, back to return. And he's got some running room. And he gets up to just short of the 25-yard line, down at the 24. And Anthony Lucan with the tackle. They've got some players like Lucan and Ethan Rocha, and, and uh, they've got some guys that have just been outstanding on coverage all year, and uh, it's been a real advantage for the Ravens. 
Gigi's have a long way to go to uh, to score, but again, they've got they got a lot one of, of the time. best kickers ever in Cameron Fair, so and or Campbell Fair, so they've also got four minutes to do it, which is a lot of time if you can move the ball efficiently. So Jansen, quick out to the flats. It's Robin Coolio, and he gets brought down at the 30-yard line. That's Yusuf in on the tackle, Malik Yusuf. Gigi's had that play set up beautifully, but just a little bit too slow to execute. Um, but they had they had the blocking in place and everything, but it just took Jansen a little bit too long to get the ball out there. There's lots of time left in this game, Tristan. I wouldn't be surprised if each team each team scores again. So second and four, balls on the 30 for the GGs. Jansen, he goes out to Malenfant, and Malenfant gets a first down. My apologies, that was Coolio on the catch. Not to be confused with Coolio, who's saying gangsta paradise. That's a different <laughs> Coolio. <laughs> different but, Coolio, this is but, Robin uh, Coolio. The Coolio, uh, quick feed on that play to get around to get around three tacklers and get the first down turn it up field that was an exceptional play after the catch by him and it seems that on every play they flip Malenfant and Coolio to the opposite side of the field and now looking out and that's another first down that's Nicholas jean -Jean. off the pass from Josh Jansen and the Gigi's marching down the field here and they're into the Carlton Ravens territory now. I couldn't see the number of the player. It was the right tackle for the, uh, for the GGs. Um, put a great block. Carlton was trying to, trying to rush off the edge. They had, uh, they had Malik Yusuf coming in on a blitz and, and the right tackle picked him up perfectly. So one point game here at TD Place and Pope's gonna run with it. And he gets brought down by Schneider Cave. A lot of room for Polk on that on that uh, zone run on first down. So good read by the quarterback. Good job by Cave getting in there and stopping it. But again, Polk is just finding the holes and chugging his legs. And this is a much different game than we saw last year. It was the GG's blowout over the Ravens last season in the Panda game. And now we have a one point game with two minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. And the GGs marching their way down the field and a sack. Ifeon Yeka brings Josh Jansen down behind the line of scrimmage and third down. That's a huge play by Yeka. He's been a playmaker throughout his career for the Ravens but none bigger than that one here in the Panda game. What a play there by Ife Onyeka. That is very important for now the let's Ravens. See if, let's see if Fair punts the ball or whether he tries to take off for a first down again. He's in a great spot on the field to go for a fake. But I think Carlton will be ready for him. Third and eight. And they are going to punt this one away. No tomfoolery this time. And Kasim Ferdinand's got it. And it looks like there's a flag on the play. He's going to get a 15-yard, a 15-yard no yards penalty on that play. So that'll give, that'll give the Ravens the ball up around the, uh, close to the, past the 30-yard line probably. So the Ravens take over with one minute and 46 seconds left to go in the Panda game. And it looks like the Ravens fans up in the upper bowl are making their way down. And I imagine we might see, if there's a Ravens win, we'll probably see them s storm the field here. I think they're going to storm the field regardless of what happens. That's just sort of, <laughs> that's just sort of the way it goes here. But Gigi's desperately need a two and out here. So let's see what they do defensively. Lefebvre, and they're going to keep the ball on the ground with Alex Gale, and he breaks a few tackles and gets brought down short of the 40-yard line and short of a first down, probably a gain of six or seven there for Alex Gale off that run. That's a huge play for, uh, for the Ravens to get seven yards on that play on first down. 
another first down or two can, can seal this one. And the we'll GGs are going to take a timeout. In the uh, 2017 game, uh, one of the biggest plays of the game, Michael Aruda was the quarterback for Carlton, and he threw a 75-yard touchdown pass to Phil Aloki with a, a couple of minutes left. Phil Aloki was a Toronto Argonauts draft pick, and Aloki caught the ball on the sideline, went up, caught the ball from two defenders, and then was being chased down the sideline. He was running toward the scoreboard, and he was telling us after the game he was actually watching the s scoreboard while he was the jumbotron while he was running because he could tell where the Gigi's defenders were. So instead of just looking ahead for the end zone or, or looking at the sideline, he's actually watching the uh, watching the jumbotron. Of course, we didn't have a jumbotron back when I played. And he was saying is like he heard the crowd yelling, but out of the crowd, he could hear his mom yelling at him, go, go, go. <laughs> and, so it's, and it's like, how do you how do you pick your mom there's out of a crowd of 24,000? He says, oh, I know my mom's voice. I think I was just going to say <laughs> that there's no voice like your own mother's. You can definitely pick that one out. And the Ravens on second and two. So they gave Gale eight on that rush. And there's going to be another handoff here to Gale and a first down. Great tackle by Max Charbonneau, but he just didn't get there quick enough. Gale got the first down. That's a clean set of downs for the Ravens. Otto IU only has, uh, I think Ottawa IU only has one timeout left. So the clock will start when the, uh, when the, when the play's whistled in. A minute and 35 seconds left to go. And chance for the Ravens who are in the lead by one. Lefebvre going to keep it on the ground, but Gale gets met in the backfield for a loss of yards. Gigi's read that perfectly. Riley Hildebrandt, Pride and Joy Spencerville got in there. Patrick Cumberbatch got in there. Now you've got second and 13. You've got a minute 13 left on the clock, so you still got to get another first down. I would, I would look at putting the ball in the air in the flats. And Jansen has scored here today with less time. So you don't want to give Jansen and the GGs the ball back. Looks like Ottawa U is taking their final time out. So the clock will start on the snap, but if Carlton gets a first down here, Ottawa U has no, no uh, timeouts left. They can not quite knee it out, but come pretty close. Again, if you're not familiar with how Canadian timing works compared to in the U.S., we have a 20-second clock as opposed to uh, 40 seconds in the U.S. So a minute 13 is a lot, a lot of time still. Second and 14. Lefebvre, quick out to the flats. He's got Jaden Simon and another tackle for a loss. So special teams on both teams are going to come out here. Ravens going to punt this one away and they're going to give the GGs the ball back and they're going to need a stop. You can't let the GGs get into field goal range. And if I'm the GGs, I'm not I'm not rushing for a uh, block punt here. I'm uh, I'm setting up a return. Let's see how many guys they drop back. It looks like they're not coming at all. So Charles Asselin back to receive this punt. And this is a big one for him. If he can get some good yards for the GGs, but that's a great punt. And Asselin catches it on the 30. He's got room. And now he gets eaten up at the 41 yard line. And that's Aiden Arnett Smith in on the tackle. Ravens let the 20, 20 second clock go all the way down before the ball was snapped there. And Chandra. One of his best punts of the afternoon and placed it perfectly. Good return by Aslan and, and the, uh, the GGs have the ball at the 43. I would say they need to get to about uh, to about the 40, about the 48 yard line to have a shot at this. So, so they don't have far to go. If they, if they can get 20 yards, they've got a shot. Campbell Fair's got a great leg and he's a clutch kicker. First and 10, Josh Jansen moves the ball, and he had a man. He was looking 
for Kerwin Geist, and that is incomplete. And the Ravens, they're going to return home on Saturday, October 21st, when they host the Guelph Griffins in their annual pink game. And the next time you'll see the GGs, they play at home next on Saturday, October 7th, when they host the Laurier Golden Hawks right here at TD Place. Second and 10. Jansen, he's got Noah Avery, and he might be short of a first down, but he's fighting for yards. They're going to give him the 51-yard uh, line, so he's going to be two yards short. It's going to be a third and two for the GGs. And Actually, they're not in range maybe third just and, yet. Third and one and a half, maybe. So another, uh, another big play. They've got 26 seconds, so they've still got lots of time, but the clock will start now so as they wind it in. It's going to be third and one, 23 seconds. Clock's ticking. Regardless the of what GGs. happens, this has been an uh, amazing football game. They got to get the playoff here quickly. Jansen. And he looks down. He's got a man. They've got a first down, but they might not be in range. That's Nicholas John Jean who caught that ball. And he gets up to the 49 yard line. But that'll make it a 56. Yeah, they're giving yard, him the 40, 48, so a 55-yarder coming up. 55-yard attempt for a field goal here. Now, Fair had a 49-yarder, 40, a or 45-yarder to win a Panda game a couple years ago. 57 yards is the, uh, is the attempt here. They're backing it up a couple yards. 57-yarder. Now, from our vantage point, and there's going to be a timeout called by head coach Corey Grant and the Ravens. Corey Grant did not like something, and they oh, need to get these fans off the field. He's, oh, icing, he's icing the kicker. This isn't good. And we're going to have to uh, take some time here to get all these fans off the field. That's head coach Corey Grant, who is... Out in the middle of the field in the orange shirt, looking to get everyone off the field. He ran towards the official to get a timeout because he didn't like what he was seeing. Oh, he was trying to ice the kicker. He's making him think about it for 30 seconds. And, and uh, I, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't think he foresaw when he called a timeout that everyone would... Uh, run onto the field but and that's not what you want to see here right now so one second left on the clock and from our vantage point it's kind of hard to see if this ball goes through the uprights or not on this side of the field and if he misses it Braun's got to get the ball out of the uh, end zone not or to give up a point or that's one point and this one looks like it's going to be good and the GGs Campbell. are going to win the game. You Ottawa will storm the field now after Campbell Fair with a clutch 55 yard field goal. Unbelievable by Campbell Fair and the U Ottawa GGs take this Panda game six in a row by a score of 18 to 16 and the GGs fans flood the field and that might be some karma for the Carlton fans there they rush the field a little bit too early and Campbell wow. Fair comes out and wins the game for the GGs unbelievable if Campbell Fair doesn't get drafted after that kick I, I don't know what will but I mean this guy has been clutch for the last three years for this team and, and for him to, uh, and that's not the first game winner from a long distance that he's hit, but, but uh, I, don't, I think it'll go into the stats as a 56-yarder because he was behind the 55. But for him to pull that kick off, uh, for, for Jansen to have the composure to uh, get the ball down the field into scoring position, um, unbelievable comeback by the GGs on this, on this uh, game. One of the best Panda games I think I've ever seen. It was an amazing game here today. We thank you all for tuning in to our broadcast on OUA TV. Once again, 
This is Tristan Ford alongside Jeff Morris. And all congratulations to the U Ottawa GGs after a clutch game winner by Campbell Fair. And we will see you next time on OUA TV.